Hi everyone, welcome. Um, so today we're going to do a focus. Well, I've had two people call in and have um, requests on things that they would like to focus on in this yoga class. So um, one girl told me how she had pain like in the ball of her foot and her heel, um, like she's working you know, in a hospital or something like that, standing a lot, and um, finding that she's getting at the end of a long shift, getting pain through here. And when you look at photographs of her feet, her ankles are really dropping in. So we're, um, in order to, uh, so you know, it's like the knee bones connected to the thigh bone, thigh bones connected to the, okay, I won't keep singing, but I think you know the old song. So it's just how everything is connected to each other. We talked a little bit about that this week in our Yoga Therapy Tuesday session, about how, you know, one part of the body connects to the other. So um, I thought I'd do a bit of a theme on that. Uh, so in order to help the pain uh, that's in her feet, then we're going to have a look at um, how to lift the ankle so that they're not dropping and that has lots to do with our posture and how we're holding our hips and our lower body. Um, and then I had another friend, she's having trouble with tennis elbow, you know, what can I do? And uh, so again, like our uh, shoulders, our elbows, our wrists, they're all connected to each other. So. Very often I know when I've had pain through the elbow, I've been doing a lot of like chaturanga, you know, like going from the, the plank to lowering the body, and then I get pain through this elbow, and it's because I have a tightness through that shoulder. So this is my right shoulder, by the way, in the video. For some reason with um, Facebook Live, everything is backwards. So my apologies when I say right, it's your left. But I, I know I should try and say it backwards, but I, I'll just trip over my tongue, so I won't go there. Okay, fantastic. So that's the two things we're working on. So we're going to work on opening the shoulder and that will take away elbow pain. And we're going to work on um, lifting our ankles and um, you know, using our hips and thighs properly in order to um, fix up foot pain um, and then just sort of meld that into a class. So um, the usual props. So I teach a predominantly Iyengar style of yoga, but I, I do mix in little bits of all sorts of other things that I've learned because um, you know there's so many fun things with yoga it's it's not just um, uh, one one style so far as I'm concerned at least so I keep wriggling around because I'm trying to get my head into the screen that's it excellent so what you need for each class is if you can one bolster so if you don't have a bolster then just like a long pillow or a couple of pillows um, if you can have two bolsters then that's the super deluxe um, we can just have a go with that and um, it really is preferable to have two blocks. There's one, and we can, whoops, that's a half block. Where's the other one? Oh, it's back there. So two blocks this size, and then I have a half block. I'm gonna show you how to use that today. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's really useful. Um, you need to have a strap. So, I mean, you know that can just be the belt from a bathrobe or any kind of a belt, um, but something, you know, that has like two loops um, if you can get a yoga belt, you know, it's designed for it, it's great. I usually have two, so I have one long one that I can change the length. And let's get one equipment here. That's my second block. And then I have a one that's designed already to be the same width as my shoulders. So um, when I have my elbow and my thumb straight, it fits inside that loop. Um, so, I mean, you know, it's just nice to have it ready. If you're doing something like Pinchamayarasana, the forearm stand, um, you know, then I'll have it narrower because it's better to have the arms a little wider than the elbows. But most of the time, you just want to have it as wide so that your shoulders, um, elbows and wrists are all in a line. And, you know, you can also lift up the block and press that between your hands. You can still press the um, strap away you can see here if I turn sideways, and I can keep my hands on the block. So what we, why we use the strap, many reasons, but one is so that we can bring the shoulders back, we can press against the strap, and we can bring the um, upper deltoid, the upper, uh, what do you call it? Anterior deltoid, sorry, the, oh, I'm saying it all wrong today. Anyway, the upper back to bring that in. So, dorsal spine, that's the word I'm looking for. Okay, so, this is my third Facebook Live now with a yoga class, so it's all a little bit weird because I am used to having other um, people here. 
um, so that I explain something, I get some feedback and I run around the room and give people help. But, um, you know, this is the flavour, this is where we are. So, um, I'm going to give you a couple of options on what to do so we can get set up. So, um, okay, so if we have a bolster or a couple of pillows, please set that up. Now, I've got my blanket, I'll just grab that. Okay, so um, I've got a blanket here, which has been, um, you know, if it's this size and you fold it in half, this is like sort of a standard blanket we have here in Australia. So it'll be different country to country, of course. So I have the soft edge um, toward the feet end, and I'll just pop it at the end. So if you want to do this, so you can um, use this version, or if you want to do the more super deluxe version, which I quite like depending on your mood and you have the two ends stacked a little so this is a little back from the, the bottom is sticking out more and so pop my blanket on there and so what we've done the last couple of weeks we've done the barakanasana so the barakanasana butter means the bat um it means the bound angle so it's like your feet are together and your knees apart but this time we're going to do the virasana which is the knee down and the feet by the side. So you choose whichever one you prefer. Um, now be careful with this one. If you've got any knee issues, um, don't do it. Just stick to the Bhattakanasana. So I'll just demonstrate. So I'll give you three different things and I'll do a video. Um, I'll aim to do it this week, see how we go. Um, sort of explaining more about this setup so that we can just get started more easily next time. So you have your buttock a fist distance away from the end of the bolster and you can bring your feet together and then you just hands by the sides and then you lift yourself up, lifting the sternum. So the sternum is like this part where the rib, ribs join in the centre of the chest. Lifting up the sternum, bringing yourself onto the bolster and then pulling that blanket down and just rolling it underneath the neck, just like that. So you should have like the top of the ear and the bottom of the ear should be like parallel with the ceiling and the floor. That's the idea. Then you have the arms by the side. So I think it looks like my head's dropped back a bit. So ideally, I'd fold that up a little more. That's better. And that way, you know, like my face, the line of the ear is parallel with the ceiling and the floor. And to make it more challenging, just put the elbow point in the center of each palm, bringing the shoulders down the body, and then bring your buttocks towards your feet. So you can lie here, or if you wish to have a more advanced posture, I'll show you a couple of different ones, and then I'll stop talking and you can start practicing, okay? If you're here already, just stay here. Otherwise, um, now again, you can change this to one level or two levels. I'm just gonna play with two because it's already set up. Um, and because I'm taking care of my knees, I find my buttocks don't reach the floor quite properly, so I use a half block. A full block is too much for my body, so you know you practice with different things. And like I say, I will um, endeavour to get a video out this week that explains it a little more than me sort of trying to rush and make sure we get a proper class happening. So I've got the block in front, and... I've got my belt that's shoulder, dis shoulder width um, size. <laughs> and then basically what I do is I kneel in front of this setup and I put my thumbs into the creases where the knees are and I pull the thumbs down the calf muscles. All right, so come forward a little there. And so that I'm sitting again like with, my, with the bolster, just away from the sacrum, the sacrum being that bone that's at the base of the tail of the um, spine between the hips. And then here, it's quite nice to put the strap around the knees that stop the knees from splaying out. And then from here again, so I'm bringing my pinky toes down toward the floor, 
fingertips by the sides, lifting up the sternum, looking straight ahead, and then bringing my sit bones toward my knees as I come back and I rest onto my bolster and put the blanket again under my head. So if you're already here and you're already relaxing, just focusing on your breath, bring your attention to your heart center and just inhaling and exhaling, just observing how when you inhale the breath is cool and when you exhale the breath is warm. So resting here and if you want something a little bit more challenging, so I'll uh, just move all of that out of the way. So remember, you're just staying in whatever's comfortable, or if you want to challenge, play along. Okay, so we've got the two blocks, and I'll have one horizontal, which is for my head, and one vertical, which is for between my shoulder blades. So I'm really working on bringing in that dorsal spine. So I sit in front of that. Move the calf muscles down with my thumbs. Bring the skin of the knees forward. And then sitting down, I might use a half block here. That's better. And then I move these so that, because I want to lie back and have the block in between my shoulder blades and then my head supported by the block at the back. Okay, so you can see this is a much stronger opening. So to gauge if you're ready or not, first of all, you're comfortable, and second of all, you want to have that the abdomen is soft. And then from here, you can hold the elbows above the head, moving the skull away toward the wall behind you to lengthen the neck. And just staying here and breathing. Okay, so choose your posture and focusing on your breath. Letting go the whole day, whatever's been going on, the evening, whatever time zone you're in, just relax, release, and let go. So we're in the time of the Scorpio full moon. So those of us with a lot of Scorpio in our chart, of course, will feel it a lot more. So whenever the moon comes into a sign that you have a lot of, whether it be the Sun, Venus, Mercury, whatever. If the Moon is in your sign, then it will be more powerful for you. So this Scorpio full Moon coincides with what they call WESAC. So just stay there. And so WESAC is um, in the month of May, the full Moon in the month of May. So just relax and breathe while we chat. And in the month of May, you have um, the Buddhists and the Tibetans. Uh, this is the most important time of the year, this full moon, because this is when Buddha, when he sat, who was born, we believe, 500 years before Christ, he sat underneath the Bodhi tree and became enlightened. And then um, he also died in the month of May. So that was considered a very auspicious time. So the meaning astrologically of the Scorpio full moon is about um, letting go and endings. So always the full moon, like the full moon is when we, uh, sorry, the new moon, so when the moon is dark, this is when we start a project and the full moon is sort of when the project is kind of ending, you know, it's, it's um, going to its zenith. So Scorpio, of course, is a time of um, transformations and change. So by allowing ourselves to um, surrender and let go and accept the fact that things have changed. So it's, and it's also a time of, like it's, you know, it's related to death, it's related to transformation. And uh, it's a time where we can start to look back when we come to that place of surrender and acceptance and recognize all those things that have happened, that have passed, have been very valid and important. Um, although we went through a lot of challenges and we may or may not have liked it, 
it's been an important part of our evolution and we start to understand why it had to happen in the first place. Okay, so from wherever you are now, I'd like you to start to bring yourself up. Now when you do so, pressing through the forearms and the hands and lifting yourself from the sternum first, making sure that there's no strain through the knees and just lifting yourself up to a seated position. And we're just going to um, grab a block and sit on it with our legs crossed. I'll come forward into the camera a bit closer. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> everything's backwards. All right, so sitting on the book, whatever way is comfortable. Bring the flesh of the buttock bones, the flesh on the buttock bones away. Palms to the chest, thumb against the breastbone. And just deeply considering whatever it is that you need to let go. Thank it for the lesson that it's brought you and deeply surrender to what is. So let's inhale to do an own together. Inhaling. Releasing the chin to the chest. the hands and opening the eyes. Okay, so first thing we're going to work on today, we're going to work on, first of all, a little bit about digestion, because digestion also is about like, um, we have to take things in, we have to digest it, we have to let it go. So we're going to lie on our bellies and you get your blocks up so on the second level, okay? So that's first level, second level, third level. So on the second level, and we're going to place it on the, on the floor between our ribs and our hips. So we lie over the block. So the hips and the ribs are on each side. And we bring the big toes to touch behind us. So that's important because that's creating a circuit. Remember, we're energetic beings. And then just bring your, for, your uh, chin or forehead to the floor, whatever feels right. And arms out to the sides, arms out flat. And just rest in here. So just rest there for about a minute and feel the pulse. So when you have this against your belly button, you can feel a pulse. Now, if this is too uncomfortable for you, so you move it around, so remember it's right on the belly button, if it's too uncomfortable for you, then just put your fists underneath your belly. And if that's still uncomfortable, just the arms by the sides, palms facing up. So I'll demonstrate. So you can put the fists under the belly and just turn the head to one side if you prefer than having the chin on the floor. Or just bring the hands by the sides. But remember to have the toes touching. So this is very, very good for the digestive system. And let's everybody turn our head towards the right, regardless of what you're doing already, because this is a nice passive stretch for the neck, allowing the shoulders to come to the floor. And now let's turn our heads to the left. And then bring your chin forward, bring your hands just underneath your shoulders, elbows in, and just pressing yourself up to hands and knees. Okay, so now that you're on your hands and knees, and have your knees hip width apart, so the knees and the wrists are in a line, one behind the other, and then pressing down through the hands and down through the knees, bring the shoulders back, sternum forward, pulling in the lower belly, and just lengthening the spine and lengthening Excellent. Now from here we're going to do what they call, well, in most yoga studios they call it threading the needle, but the first time I learned it they called it the car accident, which was quite 
funny, I thought, you know, sort of dark humour. So this is Scorpio full moon. So bringing the left arm in the space between the, arm, the hand and the knee, and then having that left arm flat on the floor, the right hand stays where it is, and bringing that left shoulder down towards your knee. So with the arm that's on the floor, press that arm onto the floor and try and have the buttocks not moving at all. So pressing that arm down and bring the shoulder more and more toward the ear. So the left side of my head is on the floor and my right palm is on the floor in front of my elbow. So I'm just getting a nice stretch here through the shoulder and you could also feel it down the latissimus dorsi, down the left side along the rib cage there, side flank. Now here bring your right hand on top of your left and then walk your right hand out as far as it will go and then walk those fingers around, take your time, so walking them around towards the top of your head so your right arm is straight and just walk the fingers around so that your bicep is over your ear, remembering not to move your tail and try to bring those fingers further behind, back behind the head as far as you can go, and then bring the outside of that armpit toward the floor so you're getting a stretch between the shoulder blades as well. So keep bringing that left shoulder blade shoulder down if you've noticed it started to wriggle up. Or maybe with this stretch you're getting some more flexibility coming through and you can move that left shoulder down away from the ear that's on the floor. And to make it a little more complicated, lift that arm up above the head and then um, bend the elbow and hold the top of the left thigh. So, and then bring that shoulder back up towards the sky and pressing the side of the head down. So we're getting some work through the neck as well. Beautiful. So keep pressing that left arm, keep bringing the shoulder down. So it's a dynamic pose. Um, keep trying to bring the tops of the ankles onto the floor, the shins onto the floor, pinky toes toward the floor. So you keep trying to bring whatever's in contact with the floor toward the floor. Great, and let's release. So unwinding, coming back to hands and knees. So again, um, having your wrists, elbows and shoulders all in a line. Have the eyes of the elbows looking at each other, so turn it around. And then pressing through the hands, pressing the shins down, ankles down, lifting through the lower belly. Neck is an extension of the spine and bring the shoulder blades down the rib cage. Inhale and exhale, bring that right arm into the space between your left hand and your left knee. And then turning your head so that your right ear is on the floor, right shoulder away from your ear. And try to really press the side of the head down. And again, don't move your hips. So just breathing naturally, keep coming back to the breath. Notice if your mind is wandering or you're worrying about the future or the past, just let it go. Surrender. So bringing that right shoulder down and pressing that right arm onto the floor. Now stretch out your left hand, so your left hand is on top of the right. And then stretch that left hand as far forward as it will of the fingertips. And then walking those left fingertips along the floor, like like you've got a cousin in hand from, and bringing the fingers above the head and then rotating the bicep toward the ear so you're opening that shoulder and moving the fingers as far as you can above the head, fingers on the floor and bring that right shoulder down again and pressing the side of the head onto the floor. Pressing the palm down with the hand above the head, pressing the arm down that's on the floor pressing the shins down, pressing the little toes toward the floor. And if you want to make it more complicated, bring the left arm up into the sky, bend that elbow and hold the top of the right thigh, opening up through the left shoulder to get some work through the upper spine. Rest here. So just resting in whatever part of the pose is comfortable for you, just resting here. 
So keep working on it, keep bringing the shoulder down, pressing the arm down, opening up the shoulders, bringing the dorsal spine in, so the thoracic spine in. Keep pulling in through the lower belly, keep pressing the legs down, the shins, the ankles, the little toes. Good. And let's unravel. Now going back to the crocodile pose. So no crocodiles around here, fortunately. They're another thousand kilometers up north. So big toes touching, so that we're getting that electrical circuit through the body. And this time, crossing the right arm in front of the left, and then just bring your body, your so crossing the arms as much as they will, and bring your chin onto the top of your arm, like the front arm. So for me, it's on the rotator cuff. So like where the shoulder kind of joins the upper arm. And just relax over here as you feel your arms moving further away from each other. And you really get a nice stretch. So it really is great for rotator cuff stuff. Really great for opening up through the shoulders. Keep the shoulders coming down away from the ears. See if you can, even if it doesn't move, visualize the shoulders coming down towards your heels, relax the head. change to the other side. Now, any So this time the left arm in front. Now remember any comments to let me know if it's too fast or too slow is really helpful because like I say I don't really have an audience and um, I'm just kind of trying to think of what would feel right. I like things to be a bit slower but some people get a bit bored you know so um, you just got to let me know please. So bring the chin onto the Top of the left arm where the rotator cuff is, like where the shoulder joins the upper arm. Letting your head loose, let your elbows go further away. Bring the tops of the shoulders down toward the tops of your hips. And just release here. Okay, so now we're going to do the deer pose. So I make a joke, this is the deer that I hit by the car. All right, Julia, bad joke. Stop it, stop it. But you've got to have a bit of fun sometimes. Okay, so it's the deer pose. So the deer pose, you stretch the arms out to the sides. Just move that out of the way. Okay, so stretch the arms out to the sides, chin on the mat, big toes touching, and then bring like the inner groins to the sky, out of thighs. To the, to the floor, and then um, you're going to need one block. I'll just grab my block. Okay, here it is. All right, so you're going to need a block. So again, toes touching, and we're going to get the block and put that just like where our cheek is, and we're going to have the arms out of the T-shape, and then bring fold the right hand, put it underneath the right shoulder, and then roll up onto your left side. Now, bend your right foot to the outside of the left knee and then bring your hips forward a little. The reason for that is to keep the spine straight because when we turn, we tend to get a little twist going on. Okay, good. Now bring that foot in front of the thigh. So the right foot in front of the thigh above the knee. So wherever is comfortable for you. So you may have your foot down here or here. So the higher, the better and bring that knee away. Now, the left arm, which you can't see, hasn't moved, it's still in the T-shape. So now that left hand, I'm moving up towards my head, but I'm continuing to keep my arm flat. So you can keep it where it is, 
or you can try to move the fingertips up that way, yeah, up towards your head. Doesn't matter how far, it's just about feeling something. So we can just stay here. So the left leg is really quite relaxed, really. This blade of the foot, outer blade is on the floor. So we're just resting here. And now if you're happy here, just stay here. But if you want a more um, advanced version or a, you know, a version that gets a little more deeply into that shoulder joint, then what I suggest you do is like, um, I'm just going to roll forward a little and turn my back hand up so that the palm is facing the ceiling. I think you can see my palm there. And I bring the hand down toward my bottom hip. And then I'm going to um, bring my right hand up to the sky and then interlace the fingers behind me and then stretching the arms. So I'm really um, got my arms straight. I've got the palms of my hands together, the heels of the hands together and just lifting my hands up toward my head. And then to make it a little harder again, I bring that right foot back to where it was originally, bend both feet, have them in a line, and then bring your buttock forward in order to have both knees straight up to the sky. I notice when I look at myself in this video that um, the knees look a little uneven. It's just because of the angle of the camera, but the knees are actually even with each other, or they should be toes. Excellent. So we just stay here for a bit. Just breathe. So wherever you are, just breathe, breathe, breathe. And whenever you feel a tight sore spot, just bring your focus there and imagine a warm orange light just going into that place and releasing and relaxing and letting go. And notice if any thoughts or emotions come up because we hold, you know, our bodies are amazing like a hologram. Every cell contains every emotion, every feeling. So when we get stressed, for example, we lift our shoulders up to our ears. And then if we don't release the stress, you know, the shoulders just keep coming up. <laughs> you know, a simplistic version. So when we release like this, some of the old um, sort of pent up emotions can come out. Okay, let's come out. Just be gentle with yourself. Remember that some of these yoga postures look like they're nothing at all and it's like oh yeah you just twist your body around but they are very powerful so let's lie back with our arms out of the t-shape again i'm going to put the block on my forehead so my nose is away from the floor and just the arms out and then bringing the outer thighs toward the floor inner thighs up so there's a, a circular motion from inner thigh to outer thigh Arms out, palms out, flat, arms out from the shoulders. Great. Now we're going to do the other side. So this time I bend my left elbow and so that my left hand is above my, um, uh, what do you call it, left shoulder. And I roll onto my right shoulder and the left foot is in front of my right knee and I bring that hip forward. So you can see that I move from having my back at an angle to my back straight. And I'll move that block till it's comfortable. And then here, I can just bring that foot behind the knee, push that knee back, and then a nice stretch to that right arm. Now this right arm, I can then work on lifting up higher toward my head. So my right rotator cuff here isn't, this uh, causes me a little bit of tightness, so I'm not moving it very far. The other arm I could move more. But that's the point. We get to learn where our imbalances are and we keep working on it. So, and we accept where we are. Otherwise, we're just constantly, you know, it makes us miserable otherwise. Great. Now, if that's quite comfortable for you, then just move, roll your body a little forward toward the left hand and then move that right arm down, turning the palm upwards and then interlacing with the left hand into the right and then straightening the arms. So I'm bringing the chest forward and I'm bringing my um, dorsal spine in, so my upper thoracic in, straightening the arms, palms of the hands together. I've got my foot in front of that left knee. Sorry if I didn't do that before I meant to. Okay, and then from here, I can bring both feet together and both knees together 
So I'm getting a really nice rotation through that thoracic spine at the same time as working through the shoulders. So we just relax here. Bit of noise in the background, I hope it's not coming through. So just resting here, trying to keep the knees even, feel that the toes are even, and everything is even. Even Stephen. Lower belly in. As you go, you may readjust. You feel like your spine is moving forward and your head is forward and just straighten up. So you want to have that spine vertical and yet having a twist. Good. And we will unravel. Excellent. So now, the next thing here. So we're going to now get a two blocks. One. And just put them out in front of you so that they're on the first level. So put them out in front of you. Then have your knees as wide as the mat. Big toes are touching. And then just moving the skin of the knees upward. So you just feel like the skin of the shin coming up toward above the knee. And then bringing the, the buttocks like over the heels. Now, if your buttocks are not touching your heels at all, this is where you can use the blanket because you really want to try and have that sense of contact between your heels and your thighs and buttocks. So don't be shy to just put like a, a pillow or a bolster. Some people I've seen with like two bolsters, they're like up here like this. It's all about where you're at and where your knees are at. Okay. So now what I do is I put my hands onto the blocks and I put them on the edge of the block. So the heels of my hand are on the edge. Can you see that? Yeah. And then I press the blocks forward, looking forward. And as I do that, just keep rotating the shoulders outward. So I keep bringing the bicep up. And at the same time, I'm pressing down through underneath my digit finger and my thumb. So pressing the hands forward and moving the blocks forward and keep looking forward between your hands. So you can have your thumb and pinky finger kind of grabbing the sides of the block. Now if there's no block, just do this flat on the floor. So you bring your chest down as close as it will to the floor and you're really rotating so that you're feeling a broadening across the upper back. And then when you can, bring your forehead to the floor. So keep working on that action. So you'll feel that stretch underneath the shoulder blades and you'll feel that stretch across the top of the back. Okay. Straighten the elbows. Make them really straight and really press the palms into the block and at the same time pressing them away. See if you can press them away another millimetre. Press, 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 press the hands, arms are straight. This is not a relaxation pose. This is not a yin yoga class. This is completely different. So press the hands down, working. So the harder you press, the more you work. So like I say, it's, it's kind of surprising this style of yoga. It looks like nothing, but the more you put into it, the more you straighten the arms, the more you Bring the shoulder blade, shoulders away from each other. The more you bring the shoulder blades down, the more you press the hands, the more you try and stretch them away. The more you try and keep the buttocks going past the heels and lengthening the spine, the stronger the posture. Excellent. So bringing yourself up, bringing your, your blocks forward a little again, and this time bring them up to the second level. So we're going to put the backs of the, of the forearms here because what we're doing is we're working on really rotating that shoulder so that we can get this opening through the shoulders here. So all of this you need for like doing headstand and all that kind of stuff to get a better, stronger post, pose. Okay, so the backs of forearms are on the blocks and I've got my elbows on the blocks and I'm just reaching the hands forward and looking forward and I'm bringing my pinky fingers toward the sky and my thumbs toward the ground. So I keep looking forward and lengthening the neck. Now press the forearms down. At the same time, bring the shoulders towards the, the ears and then trying to bring the shoulder blades 
down the rib cage, keep bringing those thumbs toward the floor, and cut the um, inner elbow chips toward the ceiling. So imagine the inner elbows are trying to come up to the ceiling and the outer elbows are trying to come down. So you're trying to get that forearm onto the block. Now press your arm, really arms, really strongly onto both blocks. Really straighten the elbows. Really press, 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 press. Keep moving the shoulders away from your ears. Lengthening the neck, thumbs toward the floor, fingertips straight out ahead. Relax through the belly, relax the face. Just because you're working the rest of the body, this is the, the this is the learning that we get from yoga, that you might be in a point of tension or stress or work, but you can still maintain that composure. So we practice that in our postures. We relax the face and we breathe normally. We notice that we're not holding the breath, we're not breathing rapidly. It's controlled breath, just like when we started. But you keep working while your face relaxes. The tongue is relaxed, the eyes are relaxed, so you maintaining an equanimity regardless of your external circumstance. Great. Woo! Okay, very nice. Okay, so let's move those out of the way. Now we're going to come to some standing. So for standing, um, I'll just move this. Let's check the time. Oh my goodness, the time is flying, I tell you. Okay, great. Wow. It's always like that. So I'm just going to move the camera up so that you can, so that we can stand. There we go. All right, so you can see me, you can see my feet, hopefully. All right, good. Excellent. So here we're going to work now on our um, ankles particularly to help with foot pain and with working on our posture. So you need a block. Um, it's also very nice to have a strap and if you have your second block nearby we can play with that maybe but I think we're not going to have the time today. So we're going to get the block and we're going to put that just between the thighs. So get the block like on the first level and just put that between the thighs and then press the thighs together and have a look at your insides of your feet. So the insides of the feet should be parallel like train tracks. Okay, so now squeezing the thighs together and then squeezing the hips. Now bend the knees and then have a look. Your knees should be just over the toes and just check that the heels haven't come in. And then have a look at your ankle bones. And so you're pressing down through, like you're lifting the arches as you do this. So you lift the arches, bend through the knees and then bring the posterior tilt. So I'm just gonna turn sideways to show you. So if the bottom is sticking out like that, posterior tilt, we all tend to do it, straightening up the body, okay? So I'm just gonna come back forward. So bending the knees, posterior tilt, and then bring the arms down by the sides. Just roll the shoulders up, down and around, fingertips pointing toward the floor, and then squeezing the block as you straighten up your legs. Okay, great. So, as you straighten your legs, feel from the inner ankle to the inner knee to the inner groin all coming up. Imagine there's a thread. So, let's bend the knees again. So, imagine that there's like an elastic band attached to your ankle, to your inner knee chip, to your um, top of the inner thigh. So, as you press down underneath the big toes, you can feel that elastic tautening as you straighten up. Now, if you have a, so your fingertips are pointing down to the ground and you're pulling in the lower belly and lifting the sternum and bringing the chin in. So if you just look down at your ankles, you should see that they have lifted, so they're not sunken, they've lifted. Okay, great. So, now, keeping that posture, um, we're going to just grab a strap. And um, so if you don't have a strap, don't worry about it. Um, if you like, you can put a block between your hands as well or not. Um, I'm going to do it without so you can see better. So I've got my hands parallel with each other and the strap is below the elbow. So I press the hands apart 
and then I um, bring my shoulders back and I bring my shoulder blades down. So let me show you. So you can stretch your arms forward, stretch them back and then bring them down and then press the arms away, bending the knees and then that elastic band straightening up, pressing underneath the big toes and making sure that your hips and knees and ankles are all in a line. Excellent. And then inhale, lifting the arms up, keeping the shoulders down, keep the lower belly in, keep the posterior tilt of the tailbone, and then bring the hands back, straightening the arms, bringing the pinky fingers towards your face, thumbs away, and your arms come overhead. Wonderful. Okay, so the last posture, which is all we'll have time for today. So with this one, if you come to the wall in Tadasana, so you can choose to use the block, or you can practice doing it without the block, which is very handy. When I was working in an office, I used to practice this when I was waiting for the lift. <laughs> it looked like I was doing nothing. Okay, so I just stretch as it looks like. Stretch the arms out and I just stand there and just wait for the lift, right? So anyway, let's imagine, so you just put your hand on the wall. So um, have your ankles together this time, feet together, and that elastic band lifting up. So look at your ankles, they're lifting up, and the arches of feet and then keep, put your hand on, like I've got my left hand on my right shoulder to keep that down. And then bring the left chip of the shoulder toward the sky, so the eye of the elbow is looking up toward the sky. And press the hand, um, keep the fingers together, and just really press the heel of the hand into the wall. And then the left arm, pointing those fingers down, and then posterior tilt, tailbone coming down between the ankles, shoulder blades down the spine, and then keep straightening that arm. So you'll find a tendency for the arm to bend, so keep straightening it, straightening it. Remember, relax the face, relax the face, relax the face. Ah, <sighs> relax the face. Okay, so the left arm is pointing down, and the right arm is working very, very strongly. All right. Now let's point the fingertips away. So I've just done a 90 degree angle from here to here, just a 90 degree angle. So the fingertips pointing behind me, bring that shoulder down and keeping the eye of the elbow up, keep the inner chip of the elbow coming toward the sky, fingertips coming down to the floor and then really doing that posterior tilt, pulling in the lower belly, that helps to straighten the neck. Um, Sadhguru, um, who's ashram I hung out in for a while, said there's a, a direct connection between your belly button and the middle of your neck. So when you're sitting in meditation posture, cross-legged or anyway, anyway you're trying to sit and you're, you keep curving through your spine, when you pull in the belly button just a little, not hard, but just a little, it will actually straighten the neck. So you try it now, just release your belly and then pull in through the belly button and notice how your neck straightens. So there are all sorts of little funny interconnections all throughout our bodies. Okay, changing to the other side. So I'll just come to the wall here so you can, oh uh, no, that's not so good, and I'll stay where I am. Okay, so the left hand is pointing straight up. So remember the tailbone comes down and the inner chip is coming up and really try and bring that tricep, like suck it up onto the tricep, you know, the skin onto the tricep. Fingers are together like this, fingers are together, your right arm fingers are pointing down and then bring that shoulder down and then just really work on, like relax the buttocks, they're not supposed to be tight but the um, tailbone is coming down between the legs and pulling in the lower bit, pulling in the belly button will to straighten the neck, fingertips coming down to the floor and keep pressing the heel of the hand against the wall and the arms straight, 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 straight. So for me it feels like my arm is in a block of ice. It's the strangest feeling really. But um, yeah, if you can do that, it's very powerful. Let's turn the fingers 90 degrees behind us. So remember that there's, it's that shoulder height and keep bringing that chip of the elbow up. Whoa, I can feel it on this one. Relax the face, relax the scalp. We hold so much tension in our scalp. Okay, good. Alrighty, 
so we haven't done any kind of tricky um, uh, strength poses today. Um, so I'd like to just finish up with something so that you don't feel that you haven't done any. So we'll get that um, strap that's like this. And so the exercise we're going to do, if you haven't done, like you can try it tomorrow when you haven't done the shoulder exercises and then try it now. And um, there's a big difference in what you can possibly do. So we did a little bit of this exercise last week and we're just going to kind of run through it again. So I'm going to come up closer to the camera. So um, we have the strap so it's just above the elbows and the idea is that you press the strap out and the thumbs coming out, pinky fingers in, but you know, too, not, not too much like this. It's like, it's like there's a block between your hands. Um, now my hands are actually closer together and the screen they look like they're weird, but they're not. Okay. So, like this. Okay, and I'm going to put my palms flat. Now, you may not do, want to do this today, but um, so I've got my hands on the floor, so I'm just going to bring that down to here. That's it, good. And so if you like, you could just come to the dog pose and just have it. Actually, we'll do that together. Just come to the dog pose, separate all your fingers as wide as possible, and press the strap away as you bring your head Pass the strap and press your heels against the wall and really trying to broaden across the upper back and pressing underneath the thumb and the index finger. You can even lift the pinky fingers off the floor and then you keep rotating the inner um, deltoids toward the sky and the um, triceps toward the floor. So pressing through the hands, pressing through the heels, lift the buttock bones up toward the sky, lift the lower ribs a little so that you're not sinking through the body. <clears throat> so we just keep stretching down through here doing the dog pose. Beautiful. Now I'm going to come forward into a plank and then the chaturanga. So this is where a lot of people get sore elbows when they do a lot of yoga because if your shoulders aren't open enough or not strong enough, then you can get some pain here. So we'll come to the plank. I'll just see how that looks. That's better. I tend to put my bottom up. <laughs> come to the plank. And then looking forward and bending the elbows as you come forward over your toes, looking forward and then just bringing your body onto the strap. So it's quite clever, really. It's the chaturanga with support. So you're really working on having supportive elbows Bring the shoulders open and chest forward. And let's press back into the dog. <sighs> let's do one more. Coming forward and then toes forward, shoulders forward of the hands. And this time coming onto the tops of the feet and coming up into the upward dog. So I've got my toes, little toes coming toward the floor, inner groin toward the ceiling and the outer thigh coming down toward the floor. Excellent. So, and then bringing my pubic bone forward, bring the sternum up. Looking ahead, but without craning the neck too much, bring the shoulders back, bring the shoulder blades toward each other, inner back. Now, you should not be feeling anything in the lower back. If you are, then just lift the buttocks a little and then curve up through more in the upper back. Great, back into the toes. Back up into the dog. And let's walk the feet toward the hands. Hands toward the feet. And we'll just do a nice stretch so you can release the belt here if you have one. Toes onto the wrists and then bending the elbows toward the shins, letting the head drop. So really pressing those toes into the wrists. If you can't straighten your legs, then just have your thighs onto your, your abdomen. And um, bring your weight a little bit forward because we have a tendency to go backwards. Bring your heels out so that the inside of the feet are parallel. Great. And heels of the hands onto the backs of the hips, looking forward and bring yourself all the way up. Try and do that with straight legs. Okay, so we've just got five minutes left, so we're going to um, do relaxation, just five minute relaxation. So I think what we'll do is we'll just do a meditation and then you can just lie out for 10 minutes after that. So we'll get you to grab 
the block again to sit on. So we're actually going to do a pranayama, and I'll give you a link um, when this is posted on Facebook. I'll give you a link to my YouTube channel so you can learn about the pranayama, like how it works and what it is. And um, so we'll just sit cross-legged, so whatever way is comfortable for you. I like the half Padmasana. So Padmasana, of course, is both feet up, but I prefer the half Padmasana. But whatever's comfortable. If your knees are up like this, you know, you're sitting like this, then put blocks underneath your knees to keep supported because you don't want to be feeling really uncomfortable. So put something under here. So whatever's going to work for you. Move the flesh away from the sitting bones. Awesome. Now, so we're just going to finish off with some Nadi Shodam. So this means that you have the uh, left hand, yeah, left hand chin mudra. So the thumb and four, tips of the thumb and forefinger touching and the other three fingers straight. And then the wrist onto the back of the knee arm straight. The right hand bends the digit finger and the middle finger so that the other ones are pointing out. So we're going to do a, a, a ratio of one, three, two. So I'm going to inhale for four, hold for 12, exhale for eight. Inhale for eight, hold for 12, exhale for four. Now if you don't know what I'm talking about, just lie down and relax. Um, otherwise, um, please follow along with me. We'll do a couple of minutes of this and I'll give you a link below so that you can learn more about this practice. It balances the left and right um, uh, parts of the body and just gets you into a peaceful mind state. Okay, so close your eyes. Blocking the right nostril with your right thumb and inhaling through the left. For two, for three, for four. Hold both nostrils. For two, for three, for four, for five, for six, on seven, on eight, on nine, on ten, on eleven, on twelve. Exhale, right nostril blocking the left. On two, on three, on four, on five, on six, on seven, on eight. Inhale, right, on two, on three, on four. Block both nostrils. On two, on three, on four, on five, on six, on seven, on eight, on nine, on ten, on eleven, on twelve. Exhale, left, on two, on three, on four, on five, on six, on seven, on eight. Inhale, left, on two, on three, on four. Hold the breath, on two, on three, on four, on five, on six, on seven, on eight, nine, on ten, on eleven, on twelve. Exhale, right. On two, on three, on four, on five, on six, on seven, on eight. Inhale right, on two, on three, on four, on five, on six, on seven, on eight, on nine, on ten, on eleven, on twelve. Hold, on, uh, so exhale left, on two, on three, on four, on five, on six, on seven, on eight. So just releasing the hand, chin mudra with both hands, so the tip of the thumb touching, touching the tip of the index finger, other three fingers are stretched out, lengthening through the neck, shoulder blades coming down the ribs, broadening the collarbones, and just feel the serenity, as they say. So this is a time of deep letting go. This is a time of accepting change and transformation. This is a time of recognizing that through all of this we get a new perspective and that there's a reason and a rhyme for everything. And when we look back at things in hindsight, We'll understand this phase that we've been going through. So moving into a new phase now, as one door closes, as they say, 
another door opens. Let's just bring our palms to the chest for one final ohm. So inhaling. to share this time with you. Um, if you've enjoyed this, please subscribe to my YouTube channel so I can do more of this and it's so much fun. I've loved it, irregardless of whatever happens and I hope you have a beautiful day. Okay, time to go.